Um, you now you're saying all this we were doing three years ago is we were going to reopen this because at the end of this level was the richest pockets they found in the mine. It financed the whole 16 to 1 mine. And so Mike Miller says, yeah, let's do it. And we did it, and they were going gangbusters, and then uh, one reason or another, we decided to stop and direct elsewhere, and that's when we went to the compromise and started working to compromise. So I'd like to see it reopened. I've actually uh, been over the map since through some exploration. We may have a back door to the zero level, and I'd like to see it. That'd be so, interesting to see. Yeah. So, there's only one way to go. All right. And you're not going to get lost. <laughs> so, I feel pretty good about this one. This has all been recently rehabbed. Um, well, I should have pointed out there were 4,000 ounces pulled out. Um, between here and the shaft. Oh wow! That's right, just, a little uh, way away. just just above you, by the way. When they, when they came in, four thousand, wow. right? Here it is. There's an old shoe. Look at that. Okay. Uh, right up there, between here and the shaft, four thousand ounces. There's piece in there. In case you didn't hear, he was saying this is remains of an ore sheet right here, and uh, they took out four thousand ounces. Of gold right there and that shaft you're just checking out right there so lots and lots of gold in this mine and you see some of the quartz all through here you're gonna see a lot of that today they weren't following a whole lot not here Three years old. It's already got the mold on such on it. Yes. Three years old. Three years old. Brand new timbers. I actually had a name for that. It was the actual name. Oh, for that specific mold? It is a... I'm not curious about that. Good example. Yeah. What you it. don't want to see is, yeah, the black stuff. Um, the white mold is not going to kill you. This is a bulkhead, and it's told you Mark Loving, who is uh, doing most of our rehab in here. Yeah. Um, it was sloughing off. I mean, as, as they were mucking through, the material just kept coming down and coming down and coming down. Well, the guy is absolutely incredible, the work he does. He managed to start spiling means you start driving the wood in to your next one and then drive another one and just and you can see you spiled it off and actually stopped it it was running it's really wet and it would run on them wow and even when they were working here you can see how it started to run over the top and then yeah. we had to run out grab some more boards and throw some more boards and it since come back up over the top wow yeah see his hands full at the very top yeah on this thing but see they, they still got up it, 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 just, it was full of muck and of course when they start pulling the bottom out this Sorry. was all mucked out this it sloughed over the top oh wow and it ran over the top and yeah you're inside in mining yeah it was a it was quite a scramble I'll bet. Uh, to get some more timber up there that's a good 10 feet high up there yeah, yeah. and if you uh, look at that you ever see a uh, 6 by 12 bend right there yeah you're right about that yep. it is holding it back it's talking about right there yep there is, uh, definitely need some pressure factoid. The track here is 18 inches. The track at the face is 16 inches. Ah. We, we have no explanation. <laughs> that is odd. You have 18 inch gauge, which is pretty common. When we were running the mucker up there, we determined that the track was actually set at, at 16 inches. So everything from the shaft here to the north had, had basically had been abandoned. 
Huh. And it caved in, and they were using the main shaft, so they didn't care what was going on down here. But the fact that it was 16, it's got to tell you, maybe that was real old, that they were maybe wood ore, co wood ore cars, 16 narrow gauge, right. before they standardized with, with an 18. It's like 18, 24, 36. We standard. So it was really just interesting because they kept having to pull the track and respike the track. I'm like, well, you know, and, and he also got it, comes out, Mark comes out and he goes, it's 16 inches, I swear. <laughs> See, there's some more ties. We get some ties. Look at that. That's interesting. There is the old kind of purple. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Dad, no idea. It still looks pretty good, though. You know, but it's incredible. It's three years old and the stuff growing off of them. Yeah. I don't know if it's the way the timber is, how much moisture's in today's timber versus uh, older wood. The older wood. So this is what we were up against. There's uh, there's our tallies. 207 loads. I believe, or was that 20? Oh, I'm sorry, 200, 2015. <laughs> oh, which is 207 loads? <laughs> All right, let me kind of move that out of the way. All right. Oh, boy. All right. So, track level, typical drift, about seven feet high. As you can see, it actually faulted, okay? And this big slab this drops out. enormous. Yeah. So you gotta break up that whole slab. Yeah, we were just gonna mine right through it. You see, that's that's it. That's the end of the line. Yeah, that's and, huge. Uh, that is huge. When we got in here, of course, that one that one's uh, was relatively recent, but that was a, that's where we were going, and then that's when he called it. So we're done. Time to move on. We'll be back. So, so what you have to do is just drill this. We, we would actually piece. we would actually just drill out, just like you're gonna build an archway right through here. And go right through it. I'll just leave it, reinforce it. Yeah, yep. Just pull it up, or we were actually talking about drifting off one side and going, uh, going, going around, around it. Yeah. yeah. But the time and money involved for an, an exploratory project yeah. was, you know, kind of different. So. Prohibitive. Yeah, this stuff uh, it always seems to cave, doesn't it? This material. Oh yeah. Oh, here you go. That was 725 feet from the portal. 725. Not very far, being that this thing is over 3,000 feet. Oh, it keeps going for 3,000 feet? Yeah, 3,000. Where you actually hit, they hit the vein system, and it was incredibly rich. In fact, it was sold, they don't even have production records, but wow. just some notes that it was rich. <laughs> and, and that financed the entire mine. Wow. That they were able to pay for that hoist and, and get everything in there. So it still goes punches back more than 2,000 feet. Yeah. I wonder what the conditions are like beyond this uh, mess right here. Well, we're still relatively close to the surface, so the ground is really slaty and yeah. fractured, and, and we're probably going to run into this uh, all over the place. But, right. Uh, it was exploratory because it, it hadn't been opened. Uh, like I said, it was closed in the 60s. So it would have been uh, very interesting because it's never been met. It's classic. We're using metal detectors. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, it's never, it's, it, the classic, it's never been metal detected. So we've metal detected a lot of the areas the old timers had been in and found a lot of gold. And we don't even actually have to break new ground to find gold. We just go through the, all the stuff they left. It's not bad at all. And, and we're, not, we're not just pulling pillars, we're going through ribs and, and, and new headings and, and everything finding gold. But, you know, they didn't have that technology. And if we could get back into this old level, with today's technology, it's hard to say what, what it could do for the mine. So. Sounds like it's worth trying. Yeah, and that was the idea. Get back. This deposit's very interesting. Yeah, um, awesome. I, I, I've never looked it up, but have you ever touched it? Yeah, yep. it's okay. soft. Okay, you, you, I wouldn't say you don't want to touch it. It's because of what happens when you do touch it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's typically, it's hollow, okay? Oh. Okay, it's kind of hollow. And so once you get inside, some of them, you'll it'll open it and all this mud will come out and then it, it just becomes a big mess. I mean, you will be working and you'll inadvertently hit one with your helmet oh, and man. it'll split it open and it's going down your neck and oh, man. you're like, ah, oh, when's this day going to be over? <laughs> all right. A little exploratory drift. They basically, when they punched these, they were like, okay, where, you know, this one's actually kind of going on the vein. They want to see if they're going to hit another vein or if the vein's going to open or close or widen up and it takes time and money, but they, they'll do it. Yeah. 
They're, they're looking for it. Some of them will just drift off because they're looking for another vein. Right. Yeah. Given how much gold is in there, you can't blame them. You can also see, see it's real sheety? Yes. Yeah, you can call it something else. <laughs> it's real sheety. <laughs> and, and that makes it difficult to stay up. Oh, yeah. It does not want to stay up. No, when you see awful. sheety ground, it can come out in sheets. It can come out in big slabs. And it's hard to keep up. It, you, can't, you can't bolt it. Um, the, the only way to really do it, is, in this case here, is timber it and then lag it. So you see there's timbering, post, cap, and then lagging. Yeah. That's going to keep it from getting you. Yeah. Okay. So post, cap, lagging, spreader, they put between the post to keep them upright and yeah. help support each other. So they're all kind of tied together. So, and then they'll start to crib it up. You want to get as close as the back as you can. Yeah. And then even on the top of these, they normally will backfill with wood scraps to take up any slop that right. can come falling down. Yeah, no, you don't want to leave any space. Or like this one, I'm going to put this one in. And what it's actually doing is it's actually been mainly being supported to hold that slab up. Gotcha. And that would take nothing to bring that down. You can see it's just a big sheet. Take the door, the golden ore. All right. Left turn, Clyde. So that's where we came in from, back of that junction. And now we're going to the left. Tell you what, I'll meet you there. Sounds good. good. I see daylight. Wow, look at the slab coming down here. Wow. It blew out the lagging. I love standing in front of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It all slopped off from up there. Yeah, but the lagging stopped it. Yeah, it did its job. Wow. That's some more big slabs or big chunks right there. And this is the exit. One of the exits to the mine, one of the many. So this is where we just came out of that uh, left branching fork. Zero level, portal number two. And we were just uh, walking from there, if the camera will focus on it. Came from there. And comes out this way. And then that's the building we were just checking out a little while ago. And so the ore, come from there and feed into the mill with the process which starts right here. There you go. Let's see the original ore chute was much lower. Oh wow yeah. This, this was for loader but the original was down below. So I don't know if this come across the camera but there's another chute much lower down there. But this more modern one is for the, the loader, as he was saying. And you can't see it from here, but the the mill is just down there. Okay. Coeur d'Alene. Ah, I told you it was from Idaho. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, huh? Even better. Maybe somewhere in Coeur d'Alene hardware store wants their hoist back. <laughs> Coeur d'Alene Hardware and Foundry Company, Wallace, Idaho. I wonder if they still exist. Coeur d'Alene Hardware. That is cool. Wallace, Idaho ended up in Allegheny, California. It's amazing. This is all ore here. This is all ore that hasn't been run through the mill yet. So, you can just imagine how much gold might be here. No, we're talking, we're talking early 1900s, and the mine was all electric. No, not lights, but Crazy. all the hoist, all the pumps, everything was electric. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely. Everything was, it, we're, all these canyons, they all hydroelectric. I mean, talk about self-sustainability, utilizing the natural resources. 
you know? I mean, it brought pg and &E and what they are today was all these mines. And so, as we said, this is that uh, hopper in the beginning. And uh, we're going to go down the stairs and show you the full mill process here. So, what, what was coming out of here? Because I see that this chute here runs off so away. All the, all the rock, all the ore coming from the mine went into that hopper. Right. And you always try to shoot it to... Uh, a size that it's not going to need so much work to crush. So there's an ideal size, but in it, you still end up with oversize is what I'm getting at. So as it, as it feeds out, it actually drops down into the chute. Beneath us here? Beneath us. And what happens if anything too big actually slides out and goes down the chute? Okay, so the big stuff would go out so on the right the big here. Stuff, over the right big, there. big, and there, there's some historical photos, not all that historical, but the 80s and 90s when it was running, and there'd be a massive pile of quartz right here with uh, big, big boulders of quartz that couldn't get crushed, gotcha. and they'd have to bring them back up and jackhammer them and bust them up. Gotcha. So that was unfortunate because now instead of going to the mill, now you had to move it again. And it would stack up here, and then they'd have to load it, dump truck it, and haul it all the way back up to the mill again. So it would go down through the jaw crusher, which is right below us, and it's a big one. Okay. And then right here, there you go. That's a pretty good view right there. You can see how it would come from the bottom of the crusher onto the conveyor, electromagnet, pick up any scrap steel, drill bits, whatever might get in there because you don't want it to hurt the mill. So it would go into the top. And there was a classifier there again, too. So anything that was already small enough wouldn't have to get crushed. That was all about trying to save time and money. So then it would drop down through a cone crusher where it would then crush it to about three quarters of an inch minus. And then you'd see that it actually conveyed out into the top of the ore chute right yeah. there at the top of the mill. And, and there, so for those of you who didn't catch that, the, uh, the big stuff would go off to the right on this chute. And then the finer stuff he was just talking about drops. That one's only got a few years left on it right there. Yeah, and then there's the original, that's the original stamp mill? Yes. Original yeah, stamp yeah. mill. said it was 20 There stamps? was a 20. 20 and they, stamps, they actually wow. left the 10 here just uh, for historical purposes. Do you know where the 10 went or when they no, were No, I, I really don't know where they ended up, but that'd be kind of interesting too. So, this is something pretty unique. This is one of the uh, jaw plates for the crusher. And you can see they actually wore a hole through it. There, that is amazing. Just wore it down to nothing. I know the light's terrible, but that's pretty unique. So hopefully you can see that. And then here's the uh, bottom view of the mill we were just standing on. We were standing up there before. And there is Crusher. I was just saying this is a shaker classifier right here. Yeah. So all the undersize would bypass the secondary crusher, the cone crusher, and go to the mill to drop onto the conveyor. All the oversize that came off the crusher, jaw crusher, would then go through the cone crusher. And you can see the top of it there. It would run through and then get tighter and tighter as it went down and crushed into a much smaller, at least three quarter minus, and onto the conveyor. Top of the ore bin now. Ah, uh, okay. So there is the. Uh, there's an old ore bin, ore bin and right there. the newer ore bin down here. Because there was multiple mills built where you're standing. Do you see some of the old concrete work? Oh, uh, okay. That's some of the old mill. So that's some concrete from the original so mill. There's, there's old mills and new mills, all kind of a combination of them. Lots of mills have been here over the years. There's a view of the backside wow. right there. Now this is all ore, correct? Yep. So they just they just shut it off and didn't even run out what's on the belt? That's it. You're wow. looking at it. That's amazing. Find a piece, pick it out of there. I gotta pay for fuel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and that's looking yeah. down into the hopper. So this is the room we were just in, and now we're right. coming down <laughs> to the next level. Ouch, ouch. And you can look in yeah. and see all yeah. this yeah. unprocessed yeah. ore they have. So, I mean, there's, there's got to be some good gold in there. It's just sitting there. It hasn't been run through. And then, like I said, we're going down here. 
Oh, wow. That's a big ball mill. And uh, that is all unprocessed. Yep. Wow. Everything, everything on the ground down there is all conveyor slop. Are the balls for the ball mill right there. Another view of the ball mill. So when we get down here, see how it would actually scoop the ore coming off the the secondary crush. So you don't overload the ball mill. It scoops a predetermined amount every time. Nice. So it's literally a scoop on the end. It comes around and makes a little scoop. So as the balls are crushing the material heading out the other side, it doesn't overload it or you get all the too much oversize will run out the mill. Um, this one's interesting is right there. That is a rake classifier. Huh. That would classify the oversize and the undersize or actually the, you, want, you want it as small as possible. Don't see many of them. It's an interesting concept. Those rakes actually see the cams right there going in up and down fashion. Up and down. And it brings the material back up and down. And I've never actually seen one in operation. Most will use a like a dewatering, like a screw type. That seems nice. To separate the the oversized from the undersized. Yeah, I've seen the screws, yeah. but um, that's interesting. Seeing those rakes. So I do believe I actually have a functioning light switch down here for the two. Oh, oh wow! Oh yes, there you go. Thing camera love. <laughs> All right, I don't need that. seen inside a ball mill? Yes. <laughs> There's the man door. There's the man door, huh? Yep. They were going to get new wear plates for one time. You see, look at the plates. Look at the indentations in those plates. That's from all those balls wearing the steel out. Wow. They were wearing the liners. It's, it's called the mill liner. And they're in these little pieces. And some unfortunate soul has to climb in that tank well, somebody is on the outside with a I big giant air impact undoing those bolts and pull those plates off. Wow. Yeah. And of course, these are all the balls from the ball mill. So here's the, the scoop I was referring to. Oh, so, the scoop. Okay. As you showed earlier, all your secondary crust rock comes down. And it's fed into here, and it starts to stack up in the bottom of the feed chute. This scoop rotates with the speed of the mill, and they can either speed up or slow down the mill to determine the grind. Okay, too fast, everything's going out. So that would make one pass, and it would take a scoop. And as it flips up, then gravity, and it feeds it into the mill, and the balls start doing their work. So you run too fast, everything's going to blow right through. If you get the right speed, you're going to get minimal oversize. Um, Makes sense. But I've also wondered too is how yeah. much, how much, yeah, how much beautiful, still down there. beautiful gold still laying in the bottom of that thing, okay. huh? Here's another view looking down from above. You see that massive electric motor right there. Uh, there's Jake standing next to us. He has a sense of how big it is. <laughs> it's absolutely enormous. Another view of the ball mill here. And the area we were just checking out is over there. And there's that hopper again. And we came in through there. You had between here and down here, they had um, the Newton bowls. And then from there, it went to the, the I believe they're Dilt, Deister, and there's Wilfrey. You see it laying it up against the wall? When you get down there, I'll actually show you. That's the bottom of the table. It's just a shame mm. to see them like that. 
And then that was actually where they retorted um, the mercury right there in that okay. right there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's our high grade mill there. So, and then that was the mills, mill office. That was the mill office there. There's a good view up uh, where we were just standing on top of those boards there. You can see everything that's underneath here. And uh, we're headed back down to this uh, lowest level here. six we somebody you'll hear them all the way at the top of the hill clang clang <laughs> run it through the four by six into the five gallon buckets from the five gallon buckets up into the top of the mill so We'll load 300 pounds of high-grade ore. You get a look in there, it's already been preloaded. Preloaded with the, with the balls. Ah, uh, yeah. And we'll run for about five hours. Oh, five hours, that long. And at that point, you get a real fine brush. And then run it through a spiral wheel. It's like a big giant gold pan or a gold screw. And uh, if you're lucky, you get to sit there and watch all the gold go right up nice. in your wheel. So there's no, no chemicals, anything all used at all. Specific gravity, and the gold will climb, and all the lighter stuff will wash out. Interesting stuff. Yeah. And you said this section was exclusively for the, the high grades? Yeah, stuff? we're still used today. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know that you're still yeah. using it. Okay. I, I, well, I would say I personally run the mill. Uh, I do assist uh, our president, Mike Miller, when we have a high grade mill run. So I'm, I'm a millman. And uh, if there's nothing greater to see the end result. I can imagine. Um, you know, a lot of times the guys down there, they'll see the high grade, which goes to our, our stone cutter. Um, the rest of it is in the rock and you can't see it or you may not see it until it's actually liberated and then I get to sit there and watch all the gold come out, you know, and it's really uh, something to go, this is what we're working for, this is what it's all about. Yeah. And I mean, not everybody's interested in, in doing the millman. They don't sit here and crush rock and make a bunch of noise and <laughs> get all wet. And, uh, but the end result, yeah, yeah, buttery love, right? So, well put. Yep. So, it's just a matter of rotating, and um, we'll dump the steel balls down into this bin. And then at that point, everything's caught into our glorious bucket. And I'll pass that over, um, and uh, it'll then get ran onto the wheel. Very interesting. It's actually quite efficient. I mean, personally, I'd like to see it all go over a shaker table for the fines, which I'm really surprised that we don't run one. I don't know why. I don't, I don't have an answer. I don't know if it's finances or whatnot, but you can't tell me there's not some fine, fine flour gold in, in those millings coming out of that. You know, so. Yeah, we get to walk back up and see our lovely view out the front door. Yeah. There's the view he's talking about. We'll be heading down there in just a bit. And, and goes the, to the lower shop in the 800 portal. We're right past uh, the, the settling ponds and down to the bottom. 
So we'll be heading down there next. <laughs>